Hi, uh, welcome to this introduction to recommendation systems. So here is my YouTube homepage and uh, this um, homepage can tell you a lot about me. Uh, for example, recently I have been trying to grow food. So I have watched a lot of videos about how to grow broccoli and how to grow tomatoes. Uh, also, um, I, I have a lot of orchids, so I also am really interested in understanding how to grow orchids better. So there has a video about that. So there is a video on how to make furniture. So I have been making furniture for a while, so that's another video. Uh, actually, I haven't watched any videos on furniture for a long time, but YouTube still remembers me um, watching videos about YouTube, about, about furniture. So um, also there are some videos about variational inference. I guess sometimes I also like to watch videos about variational inference. So here's another, um, uh, so this is a recommendation system um, from YouTube uh, that is trying to make me watch more videos. Here another, another example of a recommendation system. So this is Amazon and Amazon Probably I bought uh, some AI or deep learning book and Amazon decided to recommend me a few other books. These are actually pretty good recommendations. Uh, this is another example. Sometimes I read Google News. Uh, these are personalized Google News. So these news are probably recommended to me based on my reading history on Google News. They also use information about, uh, for example, where do you live? I used to live in San Francisco, so it's still giving me the weather on San Francisco. So today I want to talk about, uh, in this uh, piece of the lecture, about recommender systems, uh, the type of recommender systems out there, and in particularly I want to dive in into collaborative filtering. And in collaborative filtering we're going to talk about two types of methods, memory-based collaborative filtering, and model-based collaborative filtering, in particular, uh, matrix factorization models. So what is a recommender system? So a recommender system is an application that provides users with personalized recommendation, hopefully recommendations that you may be interested in. So here are some examples of recommendation systems. So Netflix offers users recommendations on movies, Amazon offers uh, product suggestions, uh, YouTube recommends videos, Google News recommends uh, articles to read, uh, Pandora recommends songs for you to listen, uh, Quora recommends stories for users, and finally Tinder recommends people to date. So what is the value of these recommendations for these uh, companies? So these are some recent numbers on uh, how much people use the recommendations. For example, on Netflix, 75% of what people watch is from some sort of recommendation. On YouTube, 60% of the clicks on the home screen are from recommendations. Amazon um, sales come from recommendations. 35% uh, of the sales come from recommendations. And finally, in Google Play, 40% of app installs come from recommendations. So there are basically two types of recommendation systems. Uh, one is called content-based system, and the other one is called collaborative filtering. Content-based systems are based mostly on the content of the item that you want to recommend. So the item, for example, in this, uh, in here, in this example, are sushi. So I have like five types of sushi, and I have some feature about the sushi. In this case, where they have salmon, tuna, eel, crab, or ramen. And suppose I go to the store and I buy sushi A. Maybe I go for lunch every day and I buy sushi A for a week. And the store wants to recommend something else that I could like as well. So in this particular um, feature vector we have, this, this is five features. Um, they also have Sushi C, which pretty much is, has the same ingredients as Sushi A. So they may go and recommend Sushi C to me because of 
in the past I have uh, liked Sushi A a lot. So basically what they are doing is that they are computing distances between Sushi A and all the other sushis. And because they know I like Sushi A, they would recommend something close to Sushi A. Okay, so notice that they haven't used data about any other user. They just have used data about my previous purchase history in this case, okay? On the other hand, in collaborative filtering, what we do is that we use data about all the users I have. For example, suppose that you're Amazon in the US. So you will take all the users in the US, including me, okay? And to make uh, recommendations to me, they will find users that are, for example, they may find users that are close to me so that you find items that I may be interested in based on what these other users like. Okay, so the big difference is that in the second case, we are using information about multiple users to make a recommendation to a particular user. In the first case, we are using more of um, kind of feature-based distance between these um, between these items, in this case, the sushi, and, but you're not making any, you're not making, you're not using any information about what other users are, are doing to make a recommendation to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so for example, suppose that uh, Netflix uh, has a content-based recommendation system a simple recommendation system may do something like this. Suppose I watch a cowboy movie, uh, it will basically record that the fact that I watched this cowboy movie and it will basically go and recommend to me another cowboy movie. More generally, it may have a feature vector on me on all the things I like in the past, the type of genre I, ha I like, the, the maybe the actors I like based on the, my watching history and also will make a feature vector of the movies themselves. So which actors are in those movies, what are the genres of those movies and so on. And it will use similarities between movies and similarities between my feature vector and the feature vector of a movie uh, to make a recommendation. Again, it's not gonna be using in this case any other information about any other user. So it's just my information. In collaborative filtering, as I told you before, what we're using is uh, we use all the information on every user to find similarities between users and between items to make recommendation. So in this case, we may use like uh, ratings, purchases, anything from our past user behavior. So one of the key data that we're using in recommendation is user feedback. And I just wanted to make sure very quickly that there are different types of user feedback. There is explicit feedback, ratings, for example. On Netflix, they may ask you to rate a particular movie from one to five to see how much you like it. There is another type of feedback that is the implicit feedback. The implicit feedback is anything you do on the site may be used to understand your preferences. So if you watch a movie, whether you like it or not, that may be taken as a positive feedback. Or if you're browsing and you stay uh, browsing for a while, that may be taken as an implicit feedback. Clicks, navigation history, all of that may be taken as an implicit feedback. The difference between explicit feedback and implicit feedback is that we have a lot more implicit feedback than explicit feedback. But on the other hand, they have different qualities. Maybe explicit feedback is a bit better than implicit feedback. So here are some other issues that you may wanna think about when you are uh, building a recommendation system. So we have talked already about the user which is very important um, part of the recommendation system about the items. This is what you're trying to recommend, movies, news stories, and so on. Uh, but there are also other 
things that you may want to consider when you're building this recommendation system. For example, the context, um, the device, the location, the time, or the interface. What type of um, interface are you using? A phone, a tablet, a computer? That may be important as well uh, when you're making recommendations. So in most of our conversation, we're going to talk about items and um, users. Okay. And in particular, we will think in terms of a utility metrics. So this utility metrics is going to have, uh, you know, in the rows are going to be the users and in the columns are going to be the items. In this particular example, these are um, movies. And then we're going to have in a, a rating. So if, if a particular user is rated that item, then we're going to have a rating there. Notice that there are a lot of blank in that small example we have here. And that's because um, a particular user may, may rate maybe 100 items, but we may have millions of uh, movies in our database, right? So this particular matrix is mostly going to be empty. And it's very, yeah, it's very sparse, maybe around 1% of the elements on the matrix is going to be non-empty, okay? Actually, the way we usually get this data is in tabular form. Here is an example. Uh, you may get some data that is uh, that looks like this. So you have the user ID, the movie ID, the date in which the user watched that movie, and maybe the score. Actually, in this example, I have um, one table with training data and one table with test data. And I just wanted to mention that there is kind of a mistake I think made uh, on this uh, on this example here, uh, because usually when you have training data that is t a time series, like in this case, so you have the date in which the person watched the movie, you want to take that into account when you decide how to pick the test data. So your test data should be the latest data you have. For example, you may use uh, three months of data for training and then the fourth month, the, the one, the, the last month you have, you might use it for test and validation, okay? So I just want you to know about this because uh, you can make a mistake of just mixing the data and that's not the way the actual systems work. The actual systems are trying to predict the future based on the past data. So you should mimic that at the time of finding your test you're defining at the time of defining your test data. So here is like um, kind of a diagram on um, different types of recommender systems. So they are talking about um, contents-based systems, collaborative uh, filtering techniques, and also you can think about, a, in most cases, people are gonna have a hybrid system in which you're gonna combine content-based with collaborative filtering. Now, collaborative filtering, we're going to have two types of systems there as well. Uh, one is called memory-based technique, which is pretty much using Kenya's neighbors. And another one is model-based technique in which you are actually feeding a model. So we're going to talk about both today, about memory-based filtering techniques and model based filtering techniques as well. So let's do a refraction on Kenyer's neighbors if you don't remember. Um, so so basically how Kenyer's neighbors work. So Kenyer's neighbors is a machine learning algorithm uh, in which uh, the first thing you do is that you have some vectors, your 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 input vectors, and you compute distances which distance depends on the application, but you can put distances between points, okay? And suppose that you want to predict a point, for example, this point, this green point that we have in here, okay? So what we're going to do is that we are going to pick the k nearest neighbors. In this case, if k is equal to 3, we, we pick the three closest neighbors to that point, green point, okay? And what we're going to predict based on the target on those neighbors. For example, uh, in this case, two of the neighbors have a class that is red, 
triangle, a euclid triangle, and one neighbor is he has a class that is a blue rectangle. So we're going to predict that the green one is a, a red triangle because that's the majority class. Does it make sense? So, so in the case of classification, what we do is that we predict the majority class, or we predict an, uh, you know, we can also do the mean of the probability. In this case, would be like two thirds uh, red and one third blue, something like that. Uh, in the case of regression, we will take the mean of these three neighbors. Okay, so I just wanted to refresh this because we're going to talk about Kenyon's neighbor uh, um, a few times in this lecture. So as I was telling you before, collaborative filtering methods are divided mostly in two types. One is this memory-based methods, and the other one is model-based method. So let's talk about these memory-based methods. So basically, what you have is this utility matrix of for every uh, user, the rating they have on every movie, right? So a key neighbor, a neighbor's approach, what it's going to do, is going to find a way to find distances between, say, between uh, users, and then for a particular item, you may find your Kenyan's neighbors and find a prediction based on those neighbors. So that's kind of one way to go about it. We can also do the opposite. We can find distances between items. And based on a particular uh, distance between items, we may uh, find the Kenyan's neighbors of, of the items as well. I'm going to show you an example on how to do this in a, in a second, okay? Uh, in a model-based method, we're going to talk about that later, we're going to be able to fit a model. And to make sure we understand what we're trying to do right now is to try to predict a rating that a particular user may give to an item, okay? So these are methods for doing that. So here is an example, okay? so. So basically what we have here is that we have a user called Alice and we're trying to understand what rating would Alice give to item number six. Okay, so I have a bunch of users here and I already, I'm going to give you a correlation between Alice and all the other users. In this particular case, we see that user three has the higher correlation with Alice. Okay, so for example, let's say we are doing k nearest neighbors with k equal 1. So in this case, what we would do is that look at user 3, and user 3 rated item 6 with a rating of 1, so we will give Alice the same rating in this case. So we will give Alice a rating of 1 for user 6. Why? Because user 3 is the closest to Alice, using this correlation uh, vector that we have here that has been pre-computed for us, okay? So if we wanted to use k nearest neighbor with k equal 3, we will find the users that are closest to Alice that have rated item 6 and they think the mean of those ratings, okay? So that's how a user-based collaborative filtering works. So so let's look at the opposite. So in here again, we want to make predictions for item six for Alice. And we, we have similarity between different items. So what we would do is to find the items that are similar, the most similar to item six. In this case would be item two, okay? And then look at what rating Alice gave to item two. And then we will go and, and basically give that rating, in this case it's two, to item six. We could also do, this is for Kenyan's neighbor with K equal one. We could also say, uh, let's just do it for K equals three. And we will have the uh, items that are closest to item six that were rated by Alice and take the mean of that value, okay?
So this is kind of a summary of what I was just talking about. So there are two ways to do this. So there is the user-based predictions based on Kinnear's neighbors, which is using similarities between users. There is the item-based prediction, which is using similarities between items to make predictions. So this is, uh, this is basically the memory-based uh, model. This model doesn't scale very well because we have to make uh, we have to compute distances between users and items, so this is like n square. Um, but it may work well in some uh, small data sets. We're going to talk about a different way of doing this that scales a bit better. Hmm. Yeah, so this is kind of one of the ways in which you can do this. I just wanted to show you some formulas on how you can do it. So suppose you have WIA, a similarity between user I and A, and then you have, uh, you want to make a prediction for user I and item K. So what you would do is that you will compute um, basically a weighted one way to do it is compute a weighted uh, prediction by taking the similarity between user I and A into account so in, in terms of just instead of, in instead of taking just the mean you can also take a weighted mean in this case also we uh, have been using the mean of this particular uh, of this particular user as well and for that then we will take in we will have to subtract the mean of uh, the user a that we're using to make these predictions so basically what i'm showing you here is a more generalized version of the model we talked about before Okay, so let me uh, let me change gears here and talk about uh, the matrix factorization model. In the matrix factorization model, what we're going to do is we're going to learn a feature vector for every user and a feature vector for every item. So in this particular case, Alice has this uh, feature vector that is uh, that's a two-dimensional feature vector. That is 0 0.47 and minus 0.3. And then uh, there is the movie Eat, Pray, and Love that has a feature vector of 0 0.38 and 0 0.18. I haven't told you yet how I am computing these feature vectors. I'm just telling you how we'll make the predictions in this case. In this case, the way to make predictions is that I will take the dot product or the feature vector of Alice together uh, with the feature vector of uh, eat, pray, and love and multiply that. And that would be my prediction. These dimensions, uh, you can think about it in the following way. Suppose the dimension, the first dimension could be uh, whether this book, this whether this uh, particular you know, book or movie is a fiction movie. And the dimension two could be whether this movie, the, the genre of that particular movie, you know, how much is it about romance? Um, so that's kind of one way to think about these dimensions. In reality, we're going to uh, learn these dimensions and they are in general not easy to interpret. But uh, yeah, the main thing is that every user and every item that we have is going to have a feature vector. And in this most simplistic model, we're going to take the dot product of those feature vectors, and that would give my the rating that I have for this particular, th this user has for this particular item. So, so basically, uh, again, so every user is going to have a feature vector, which I'm going to call an embedding. And every item is going to have a feature vector that I'm going to also call an embedding. So we have uh, UI are the embeddings for the users, and VJ are the embeddings for the items. 
and the predictive rating uh, yij hat is going to be the dot product between ui and vj so this is my model so here is um, an example uh, from a, a study in which they use this model they learn all of these uh, embeddings for for movies in general and then these embeddings uh, were reduced to a two-dimensional space to show you a visualization the colors correspond to different genre metadata and you can see how embeddings of a particular genre are clustering together in this visualization so again we're trying to check if these embeddings that are learned from behavioral data basically uh, make sense in terms of the genre of that particular movie and it seems that at least they are clustering together by genre in some ways. So let's talk about this model a bit more. Uh, and in particular, let's try to see if we can write this as in, in a matrix form. So here, uh, U is going to be the embeddings of users. And V is going to be a matrix of embedding uh, of items. So the matrix U is going to be NU times K, where NU is the number of users we have in our system and our training data. And the matrix V is going to have a, it's going to have dimensions NM times K, where NM is the number of items we have in our training data. So notice that K is a hyperparameter, so you can decide how big the embeddings that you are using are. These numbers could be, for example, 100 dimensions or 200 dimensions or 500 dimensions. And that would be the size of the embeddings that we have for users and items. Now, in this matrix notation, we're going to have a, that our predictions are going to be a matrix. This matrix is going to be u hat. This matrix is going to have dimensions NU times NM. And it's just going to be the dot, you know, the multiplication between U, a matrix multiplication between U and V transpose. So here is a tiny example. Okay, suppose that K is equal to, so all of your user embeddings and item embeddings as out of size 2. And we have seven users and five movies, okay? Suppose that this is how our original Y matrix looks like. So there are two, two items missing, okay? So the two ratings are missing. So the rating of user two to item A is to item one is missing and the rating of user five and item four is missing okay so you guys pause this video and think about how would you make predictions about these ratings if we assume that our model is given by the multiplication of these two matrices that we have on the right So what do you have to do to make a prediction here? So you have to identify which users and items you are trying to predict. And then you will have to find the embedding or representation of the user and the embedding and representation of the item and do a dot product. Okay. I will leave you with this example to figure out. Okay, so the next question that I have for you guys, so we have this model that uh, we have been describing that is called matrix factorization. How many parameters do we have here? Uh, 
And I think I covered that earlier when I told you how big these matrices were. So notice that the whole matrix U and V, these are our parameters, right? So this is what we have to predict. So, so in here, I told you how big these matrices were. So the number of parameters we have here is n u times k plus n m times k. Okay, so those are the number of parameters we're trying to to fit, basically. So how we are going to do that? So usually in machine learning, and it's the case here as well, we would uh, define a loss function, okay? And our loss or error function is the following. So we want to use the square distance between the actual yij and your prediction ui times vj, the dot product. So we want to use that and we want to like square that. Basically, this is the square loss function. But we are going to sum over i and j such that the rating y i j exist in our matrix or in our training data. So we're going to define these rij to be equal to 1 if user i rating items j and otherwise rij is going to be 0. So we're going to be summing over the ratings in our training data. Okay? So and then divided by the number of ratings uh, that we have. So this is our cost or error function and how do we usually use like once we have a cost of error function how do we find the values of ui and vj so well we have at least one method on how to do that which is gradient descent so so in here um yeah we want to minimize this function with respect to ui and vj for every ui and vj for every item and user in our training data and for that, we may want to just use gradient descent on ui and vj. So if you remember, gradient descent is an iterative uh, optimization algorithm that is trying to approximate the minimum of this uh, error function that we have defined. So, and this is, you know, some of the notation that you guys have, some, have seen before. So e is my error function or loss function. And W1, Wn here are all my parameters. Remember that we have a lot of these parameters. So, uh, and then we can define the gradient, which is basically the partial derivative of this loss function E with respect to all the parameters of that loss function. And then the gradient descent method is just basically going to iteratively uh, update every W. Uh, by subtracting some the gradient of e times some small number which we call the learning rate okay so in our next mini lecture we are gonna learn how to do this for this particular problem okay see you later